Yo, 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 Nakama Worldwide, welcome back to Conquer Zaki Corner. It's the boy of them. Yo. It's the boy of them. I don't even know if I'm going in the right direction, but it don't matter. But we're here to bring you our latest chapter review of One Piece 988. Sorry for the wait. Well, that, that rhymes. That's right. <laughs> If you haven't already, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the like, and we'd like to give a massive shout out and thank you to everyone that's been supporting us so far. You're always appreciated. But Kings, let's get into it. This front cover is is a mad one. Your boy, Serge. Right, man, the butter's boy. Um, <laughs> like he's going to protect his daughters, man. So you can see that they're under the attack by the navy, and he's just swimming. Like he's swimming right to them, so I see this heating up and a little bit more. Hopefully, there's a happy ending where they accept their dad and he doesn't need to do no kind of paternity test to prove it. I mean, like I said, they should be able to look at his face and like blame him for that. So, <laughs> you know, other than that, and I, I, you know, that that was the front cover for me, man. But he he looked like a strong swimmer. I say that. Yeah, he's going hard. You can see um Pez in the mid, in the middle there as well. That mm. grand daddy. I'm I'm gonna give it to him. I don't think he's a scrub. No. On the sense of big mom breeds with intention. So there's something that he can potentially do that no others can, to an extent. I'm gonna keep it very low. Or, or like big mom's one of them hood moms that loves her mixed race babies, and she wants something mixed with everything. Man. You know how? It's- yeah, yeah, true, true, true. So just hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything she, anything she can mix with. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, they, they all got different jobs in the kingdom, man. But like, you know, she wants something of everything, isn't it? Make that yeah. good old party, man. <laughs> so we pick up where we left off last week. We see Kaido looking magnificent and all the minks in front of him, man. And a big, big hype for Jack. Jack is a big brother. And look at the giant. And, and if you see the number behind him as well, it's like, wow. So the minks are obviously saying, you know, Jack, you're the one that brought hell to our city. You got a little bit of Inuarashi and Nekomamushi. You got Razo saying, right, they did it to protect me. Brother, I'm keen to repay that debt. And then, but the, the rest of the, the tribe, they, you know, they're obviously saying to their master, say, listen, man, you lot, you handle Kaido. We're going to go too long. We're going to deal with Jack and them. And let's see where it goes. So we've got Whale Forest Guardians, Roddy and BB transforming. And according to, you know, the, the manga, they say that minks turn into moon lion berserkers. Okay. So, you know, that's exactly what they are. And then you've got the three musketeers, Dogstorm, Giovanni, Shashilian, and let me skip this right, Consulot. And they all start transforming and causing a problem. But one thing I have to say, Jack is hard. You know what? It's kind of taking me back to what he did on Zoe when he was just like, bruv, like, you know what? I am not scared of anything. Don't fall back. The Su Long lifespan is short. <sighs> the thing that is interesting in there as well is um, how Kaido goes about it. It doesn't seem like he was, like almost like he was expecting it. Uh, see, this whole Su Long life lifespan is short. It's what we discussed last week. So this is what everyone's interpretation of what a mink is and their view of what how long a mink's Su Long form can last. Mm. So. It's now up to the minks to defy that on different levels, depending on what stature they're at. Some will fall quicker than others, and it's, and it's them to sort of go against the odds of, don't worry, this isn't just a spurt of power. This is going to be a longevity. We've been able to hone it. What I would say, though, is as well, remember, like, in, in, in the purpose of plot armor, now remember that the, the R alliance is outnumbered heavily. Now, what this does is it sets the frame where the minks can take out a lot of that. You know, they can mm. cause some serious trouble. They're really strong. They can cause a lot of damage, but they run out of energy. Do you understand? Like, yeah. they can't do that too long for a long time. The only two people that obviously they want to, which they've already said this chapter, they want to save from Kaido is in Arashi and Nekomamushi. But mm. I can see the minks, you know, go running riot, like really taking out huge amounts of soldiers from Kaido's ranks. But ultimately, it has to run out. And that's when it sets the president for who's going to fight Jack. Who's, you know, all the big names have to be fought by big names. Like, we don't need yeah. Sulongs to take them out. But the Sulongs will serve their purpose to maybe take out the numbers or some of the numbers, take out a lot of Kaido's army, less even these numbers. Because, you know, the more I think about it, I don't see, you know, when people say, oh, 
there's been a lot of theories in the verse saying, oh, the Grand Fleet will arrive. I don't think so. I don't think it might even be necessary. There might, there will be some help, but, you know, I think the whole Grand Fleet arriving is a bit too much and they can't because Beijing ain't even there or, you know, everyone's God knows where they are. So I think this is the purpose of the Sulong form. Mm. Just to even out the numbers. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. We then go to the ceiling and we have like a lovely, lovely, lovely scene where Shinobu is trying to free Momonosuke. And you know what? King is sharp, man. King just looks at her, grabs her by the head and sends her flying to the point where everyone is worried. But this was like for me, obviously, the, the main part of the chapter that I really enjoyed. You see the chains break at first. I was like, Momonosuke do something random or hard. Now, Queen's looking agitated. King looks shocked. And they're trying to think, how's he flying in the air? Lo and behold, we've got Sanguro or Somba Mask. Like, he's there <laughs> trying to help. But King, quick to react. Now, the question was, is like, why couldn't they, if, you know, like, observational haki should be able to allow you to sense it? Now, do you have an interpretation that maybe King did sense something, but he was trying to, well, if I sense something, why I don't see nothing? Like, kind of thing. It could have been that Shinobu and Sanji were there at the same time. Mm. So whatever he, he only visually saw one thing. He didn't visually see Sanji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the way I, I, I see it is like he's looking, he's seeing Momonosuke move, he sensed it, but he can't see it, but he uses his common sense in the next panel to attack, and that's when they exchange the kicks, which was really, really, really cool. And I really didn't expect Sanji to have no moment like clashing the first commander, which was nice, but obviously it just feels like slightly like another one of those moments where he clashed with Doflamingo and, no yeah. and you know he did a little bit but you know I don't think it's going to end too well for him in that regard <laughs> but it was hard when he goes to Momonosuke uh, way to drop your name like that man I don't know man I feel like Sanjay again is just deserves it's continuously oh he goes to with a little leg kick and then I saw Oh, well, you're going to go flying now. He just goes flying every single time. It doesn't make any... Oh, when, when are you going to show that? Once you do a leg kick to someone at that level, they go flying. Yeah, but the thing is, King didn't like, hurt his... Like, he held his own with a kick. King flew into him and drove him. Like King didn't hit him and send him flying. King went with him. So in that way, it's like King had to go all out. It's not, you know, like he, he turned into his form. And he flew into him like a torpedo and drove him back. Like so, it's almost like I'm pushing you. He's not just whacking him. So, and also we don't know how Sanji's come out of it. He even got hit by page one and he was completely fine. So, I expect him to be fully fine. It's the suit. Mm. Yeah. The I don't know what the suit scientifically does to the body and how much damage the suit absorbs rather than the body absorbs. Yeah. I mean, in the first place, I never really liked the whole idea of the suit, but it seems like for the foreseeable future, that is going to be one of Sanji's power-ups that we have to kind of accept. I would love a, like a moment where he just takes off the suit and says, you know what, this is weighing me down and like shows us something. But for now, <laughs> I, I do like how Oda's mixing up everyone and I don't think this is how the fights will end up. And Sanji did seem fine to me. It's just only a bit worrying when, when Luffy looks and says, that looked bad. <laughs> but hopefully everything's okay. But we then see... Luffy's telling Yamoto, you protect Shinobu and your son. <laughs> and mm -hmm. two things there. He's issuing an order, which means to me it's like Nakama. He only really does that with Nakama. So we already know that happening. And we've got Big Mom who comes with, you know, she's angry at Luffy because he's ruined the tea party, ruined the wedding. He's ruined um, Onigashima's um, fire festival. So she goes and uses Mighty Nation or Ikoku Sovereignty, which is the official translation. And that seems like Obviously, it sets the precedence for what's to happen next. Now, what I would like to see, yeah, is, uh, you know, I'm reaching here, yeah. I would love for her to take another sword slash and someone else to clash swords with her, just temporarily. But, you know, you know, fingers crossed. You think it'll go down, yeah? <laughs> I would love that shit. <laughs> I'd love that. Okay, what, what say then? If uh, Big Mom wants a sword fight, but then someone else with a sword comes to play. And there are other big swordsmen out there. Swordsmen out there. Zora is one of them. I would say that for this arc, the, 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 the people that have, like, okay, wait, mm. this war is going to be on, they're saying it's going to be greater than Marinford, yeah? So, mm. 
you gotta remember, like people like Sanji and Zoro, Jimbe, well not Jimbe, so he wasn't in the crew, but Sanji and Zoro in particular, they're part of the Monster Trio. They missed out on that. They missed out on a lot of like power development. And in the new world, we haven't really seen them go all out. So I fully expect them to handle the responsibility of you know, main character defeat. Like, they're going to have to fight some main characters. It's not going to be... Um, but, I mean, I can also see, you know, you've got Denjiro, you've got Kinemon, you've got all the scabbards who can all swing swords. So I can see a lot of people going at Big Mom, but it's just, in terms of a sword fight, you know, I could see something like... This would be a lovely, plausible one. She goes with her sword. Zoro comes and deals with her sword. Then she puts her sword away, goes to punch him, and then Luffy comes in like, nah, bruv. Like, you know, they're not having that. So, I mean, no one's going to beat Big Mom. The whole point is just to hold their own. And that's like a little feat in itself. It's like, because they've even hyped her up in this chapter where they've said, like, she's every bit as fearsome as Kaido. What then? We have two Kaido. Obviously, it's the recognition of her Yonko, you know, mm. power level, power scaling. So it, w- it would serve nice also for Zoro to belong in that later on fight when they're all on Kaido at the end, because that's how it has to be. It ain't going to be no one-on-ones with Kaido. Mm. But then how about another reach? This is this is more of a reach than anything. Where's where's Mihawk at the moment? You must already already know, and I just forgotten. But Mihawk's being dealt with by the Navy. So the Navy have t- abolished the Shishibu. I mean, the world government's mm. abolished the Shishibukai system, and they've all gone for Mihawk. Now at this point, you know, we don't know what happened, what time scaling way missed within the last week or so. Remember, he travels on that little boat. Mm. So I imagine that Mihawk dealt with all of them. But mm-hmm. I just don't see him coming to Wayno, especially okay. just because he's Zoro's master. Like the last thing Zoro needs is his master showing him up. So I don't see, I don't think that's like his purpose. The next time we see Mihawk, I kind of see it happening either versus the government or against Shanks. the Blackbeard pirates. No, stuff Shanks, like no. that. Nah, him and Shanks are buddies, man. Like I have, I think like the way they've been kind of written throughout the story is they pop up. So Mm -hmm. when they pop up, it will be to make a big impact or to receive a big impact. So like, then they're not characters in and of themselves that are going to be carried on like as the main protagonists. They just Mm -hmm. serve a purpose, and that's why they've been hyped the way they've been hyped. All right, all right. Those are in big mom, yeah. Just a moment. Give me a moment. (laughs) Just one moment. That's all I want. I I don't expect too much. You know, it'd be funny though if if like. Zora like clash the swords with her and she goes, mmm, breathe. Yeah. <laughs> I need a swordsman in my crew. Yeah, it could be it could be a little reveal for um might not much really wouldn't happen, but just say if that were to go down, it could be a, a reveal for Zora's history. Maybe years of some type of lineage that yeah. I- I mean, even like Luffy says here, damn it, I want to go up there too. But if she follows me, that just means more enemies for them to fight. So mm. Luffy's obviously showed he don't want to be in front of her, yeah? So someone has to take her um, away. Now, the only other thing is, is obviously Zeus and Nami, they have a little bus up. She breaks up with him. She's like, I'm not feeding you no more lightning. You know, you've been disloyal. But he tries to explain to her, it's like, she controls my soul. Like, I can't do... I can't do anything. Like I have to go to Mama. But obviously, then we just have like the Frankie the Freedom Rider and Brooke. And I just want to make sure I want to get this right. What Brooke, what Brooke says? He goes, "Consider yourself sliced." Now we see that Zeus has been cut in half. The only other thing I could imagine is can because he's got like a, a, a form of soul soul fruit as well. Can he cut the soul in two? So half can go with Nami and half can't. Mm. That's that's. The, only question is that possible mm. and to add on to that is they smack big mom in the face and throughout the series she's always when she gets emotional or takes a hit she can lose her memory so does that happen now where she's just like goes on like, oh i'm hungry or you know oh you know she just does some random stuff and kind of because they have to allow luffy to go to the roof luffy ain't got time to be fighting big mom because he can't they may just have to give him a moment where he holds his own, like she tries to swing and he shows us his growth. But Luffy ain't got no business fighting Big Mom to this arc. That comes later. It could as also it could also be a berserk moment where they've um run into her and she just loses it and just wipes out armies regardless of the side. Yeah, and Kaido has to come to like 
you know, stop her. Now, obviously, and also Peros Peros coming. So yeah. He could serve as someone to remind her. Also, she has that funny relationship with Choppermon. Could he come and kind of command her to help? You know, like, oh, babe, I've got food for you. But these guys won't let me get to it. Ah, food? Oh, <laughs> Like, you know, all kinds of stuff could happen with this, man. Like, I'm surprised that, you know, the one thing is, like, they've hyped Yonko to be so, like, when I imagine a Yonko, I imagine crazy conquerors hacky, crazy armament hacky, but also crazy observational hacky. Like, for her to just kind of take, to always get kind of hit or something happen to her, I, I don't really like that. She, mm. But she has been kind of created to be the unsta- unstable, fickle Yonko, but they've kind of balanced out with her physical strength. I think it's, it's, there's a level of clumsiness. So it's all like they, their characters are all powerful. Do you know what? Do you, know, you say you don't like it, you know, and it just came to me, just my, they're human. All this humanizing these crazy, powerful individuals. Yeah. To show that although they've got the reach that no one else can touch and the kind of power that you can't even see with your eyes, if something happens, that a smack on the head or something that drops them, they got dropped as a child, anything can deflect them into becoming more human again. And that's what he saw and tries to build up with the characters. It'll, and it, do you know what the funny thing is? We say that, but look how human Kaido is. Look how conflicted he is as a character and how much emotions he's going through internally, regardless of how of a menacing look he has and how much he transforms into a dragon and why he drinks himself to sleep. There's always certain things that these people do. Blackbeard, Blackbeard is one of the most craziest villains and like, notorious for just... They said he didn't... You know when, they, when we did a flashback with um, Odin and they looked at Blackbeard as a child? Is he a monster? He didn't sleep. And he's just staring. There's something wrong with you as mm. a child. What would you want? Mm. What trauma go through to get to that point? So I guess, I guess it's just all, it brings to a point where he's showing that Big Mom's so nonchalant, but with that nonchalant comes with the headache of being hurt and going hungry and having pains. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I could, I could agree with that, man. Like, I mean, like I said, I don't think it's fake. It's just that she's clearly been the one that's kind of been yeah. mugged in that kind of way. But she also also comes across indestructible. So yeah. there's level to it. Like everything is balanced out. So it, it's kind of crazy how it works. But then they hit us with another two week break. So where do you guys think we go next chapter? Mm, I think it will come away from, somehow get away from these scenes here. And we'll start talking a bit about, a bit more about why Paris Perron and Mark, uh, Marco de Phoenix is about. I agree half. I think I think we've got a mixture of that. Mm. But I also think we're going to get more involved in the Sulam fight. Mm. I, and as it is, that's going to be just sort of the big battle where he's just going to show you the levels of what they can go to, each individual. Because he's specifically pointing out the musketeers and these individuals particularly, to show you what they're going to start doing and how who they're going to take out. All right. How long do you think the Su Long fight will last in terms of chapters? Mm, three, four. Yeah. yeah. Three, four. I mean, we'll see. There'll be different levels of the Su Long fight. There'll be the initial level. There'll be the back, the backlash, the ones that arise, and, like, and then the epic ending to it. So I think there will be... And I think it could also, like like you said, like so for me, next chapter, I think we're going to, half of it will be on a Sulong and the other half will be different snippets. We might see where Law and the other guys are. We might see where Marco the Phoenix and um, Peros Pero are. We might see Luffy and Big Mom, like a little something from that. But I think we will go into the Sulong battle. Or yeah. we won't go into the Sulong battle at all. We'll start that at the end of next chapter after they cover mm-hmm. a few things. That's what Oda likes to do. Show us all this stuff. Now let's focus on this. So. Right, you're right, sir. He's going to start setting the battlefield. Room one, room two, room three, room four, and then start saying who's versus who. And start, start setting this up from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. But guys, let us know what you thought down in the comment section below. Tell us what you expect. Who, how do you feel about Sanji clashing with King? Do you, do you feel like that was another you know, short change in Sanji? Or do you think he held his own? Do you think that he redeems himself a little bit? Do you think we go on further with that? Where do you see the Sulong fight going? Do you guys see the Sulongs causing some real damage? Do you agree with us? Is there more to that? 
Big Mom, how are we gonna deal with her? How do you, how would you feel about Zoro clashing swords with Big Mom? Come on, man, like she can't be coming into Wayne or swinging swords and, you know, man, listen, this is his home nation. We don't know it yet, but you know, could you imagine, like Granddad, you know, Granddad Roro Noah was from there, or whatever. So <laughs> let's see. If you haven't already, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the like, and don't forget to share the video. The more you share, the more we grow. But from Conquerors, like you're going to hear that time. Peace out. So.